Hello and welcome to this video on finding the nth term formula of a linear sequence. Now just to recap, I want us to find the first three terms of the sequence with the nth term formula for m plus 1 and we explored that in a previous video. So what would be the first term of this sequence? Well n would be 1 if we wanted the first term, so it would be 4 times 1 plus 1, 4 plus 1 is 5, so the first term would be 5. If we wanted the second term, n is 2, so it would be 4 times 2 plus 1, that's 9. And if we wanted the third term, n is 3, so it would be 4 times 3 plus 1, which is 13. And we could get more terms like that in the same way to get the fourth term, fifth term, etc. Now let's just say that I gave you this sequence, but I didn't give you the nth term formula. And I said, work out what this formula was. Do we have a method to do it? Is there any pattern in these numbers that gives us clues as to the formula to this? Well, there is. If we look at the first difference, we've got that we're adding 4 that we're adding 4, and that we're adding 4. And can you see that this difference here matches the number on front of the n? I might not know the complete formula yet, but I know that the formula is going to start with 4n. So what I could then do is a table like this. So I'm going to do a table, and I'm going to put the top row is going to be n. And remember, n is the position in the sequence. So with the third term of the sequence, n would be 3. So I'm going to put 1, 2, 3, for representing the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. So we said, okay, the first difference is 4, so we know the formula starts with 4n, then what would 4n give you? Well, what would be the first term of the sequence would be 4 times 1, which is 4. The second term of the sequence would be 4 times 2, which is 8, then it would be 12, and then it would be 16, etc. So that was a good start. However, this doesn't give us the sequence that we want, does it? We got 4 but we actually wanted 5. So let's have this extra row, which is what we need to add on. Yep. What do we need to do to the 4 to get to the correct number of 5 as the first term? Well, we need to add 1, don't we? What do we need to do to 8 to get to 9? Well, we need to add 1. What do we need to do to 12 to get to 13? We need to add 1. And you can see we just have to add 1. So we started with a formula of 4n for our sequence. But we saw that we needed to add an extra one on to get the correct term of the sequence. So it's going to be 4n plus 1. And can you see that this 4n row here, that gives us the 4 times table. And that will help us when we try to do these quickly with more examples. So we've got these here. I want us to find the nth term and the hundredth term of each of these sequences. So we've got 2, 5, 8, 11, 14. So the first thing we do is we see that the first difference, we were adding 3, we're adding 3, we're adding 3. So do you remember, it means that our formula is going to start with 3n. We just take that number and plop it on front of an n. So we know our formula starts with 3n. And then we say, well, if we had 3n as our formula, what would it give us? The first term would be 3 times 1, which is 3. Then it would give us 6. Then it would give us 9 for the third term, etc. So if we had 3, 6, 9, what do we need to do to get to 2, 5, 8? Well, you can see that we need to subtract 1. So it's going to be 3n minus 1. But if we want to do that just a long way, this one time again, and then I'll try and do it the quick way, we have this initial row at the top, our n row, which is, let's just do 1, 2, 3, 4. That would be enough. Then what would 3n give us? We said that gave us the 3 times table, just like 4n gave us the 4 times table. And then what did we need to do add on or maybe subtract? Well, to get from 3 to 2, we had to minus 1. To get from 6 to 5, we had to minus 1. And we could see, therefore, it's 3n, but then we had to subtract 1. So the form would be 3n minus 1. But as I say, the, you want to try and do this mentally if you can. 3n gives us a 3 times table, so it gives us 3, 6, 9 as a sequence. But we need to subtract 1 to get to the correct term of the sequence. So it's 3n minus 1. Let's do the second one. We've got 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. And then we're adding 2. We're adding 2 etc. So it means our formula is going to start, the nth term is going to be, that's the nth term, is going to be 2n. We put that in front of an n term. Now 2n gives us a 2 times table, so it's going to be 2, 4, 6. So it would give us 2, 4, 6, but we actually want 5, 7, 9. What do we need to do to this? We need to add 3. We need to add 3 each time, so it's going to be 2n plus 3. Now I forgot last time to find the hundredth term, but let's do it here. The hundredth term of the sequence, 
Well, we saw in the previous video that we just need to make n 100. So 2 times 100 is 200 plus 3 would be 203. So we've managed to get some distant term in this sequence without having to write out all the numbers up to the 100th term. Let's do some more. So, third one, we've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's try and do this one mentally. We're adding 1 each time. So that means that our formula, nth term formula, starts with 1n, which is the same as just saying n. And 1n gives us a 1 times table as our sequence. It would be 1, 2, 3, 4. I could write up here if I wanted. Or you can do it in your head. What do we need to do to that to get to the correct term? We need to add 3. We need to add 3. We need to add 3. So it's going to be 1n plus 3. And we can always check it just to see whether this actually gives us the right term. So if we wanted to say the third term of the sequence, 1 times 3 is 3, plus 3 is 6, and we can see the third term indeed is 6. And we want the hundredth term, so that would be 1 times 100, which is 100, plus 3 is 103. Now let's do the fourth one here. We've got 12, 8, 4, 0, minus 4. Now what's happening each time? Well, we're minusing 4. We're subtracting 4, we're subtracting 4, we're subtracting 4. So we can see we're subtracting this time rather than adding. So it makes it a bit harder, but just because it's a negative number, it doesn't change the maths, we're still going to put that number in front of n, so it's going to be minus 4n. Now I might do it the table way this time rather than doing it in our head. So we've got n as the top row, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now what would minus 4n give us as a sequence? Well the first term would be minus 4 times 1, which is minus 4. The second term would be minus 4 times 2, which is minus 8, minus 12, minus 16. And what do I need to add to this, or subtract, to get to the right term? Well I've got minus 4, I want 12, so I need to add 16. What I need to do to minus 8 to get to 8? Well, I need to add 16, and it will always be add 16. So we know, therefore, the formula is going to be minus 4n, and then we add it on 16. Right, I've got two test your understanding questions here that I want you to do. We've got the first one, which is 3, 8, 13, 18, 23. And then I want you to do the second one, which is 6.5, 4, 1.5 minus 1. So have a go at that. You may want to pause the video now. Right, let's do this. So this first one, we can see that the difference is 5 each time. So that means the formula is going to start 5n. That's the nth term. And then we imagine the 5 times table. 5n gives us a 5 times table, so that would be 5, 10, 15, 20. That's what 5n would actually give us as a sequence, but we want these numbers, we have to subtract 2 to correct it, don't we? So it's going to be 5n minus 2. And what about this second one? Well, the difference each time is minus 2.5, isn't it? So we've got minus 2.5, minus 2.5, minus 2.5. So our formula starts with minus 2.5n. And then we think, well, let's think about the minus 2.5 times table. If we wanted the first term, of this sequence, it would be minus 2.5 times 1, which is minus 2.5, but we want 6.5, and we have to add on 9, don't we? So it's going to be minus 2.5n plus 9. That would be the nth term. Or a slightly tidier way of writing this would be to put the positive term first. It would be 9 minus 2.5n. In general, if you have a negative term plus something, it's better to put the positive term first because you have less symbols. It just looks a bit tidier than that does, doesn't it? And that is the final answer.